Now, then, no one enjoys smelly food when travelling, probably other than the person that's doing the eating. Yeah, because they, they want it. Yeah. They're but enjoying the smell. Does that mean it should be banned? That's what Britain's former top doctor wants. She believes by doing it, she'll cut obesity across the UK. Yes, now, Dame Sally Davis has proposed a blanket ban on food and drink apart from water across the whole public transport network. And our correspondent, Nick Dixon, is on a train for us this morning to find out what commuters think about it. Is anyone tucking into some smelly breakfast there, Nick? London Blackfriars, City Tensley. They most certainly are, Kate. Good morning to you. We got on the train at Brighton. We're just at Hayward's Heath Station just now. We've seen quite a few people having their... Uh, their breakfast snacks, I've seen them eating muesli bars, croissants, of course, some tuck it into sausage and bacon sandwiches as well. And it's interesting chatting to passengers. Many of them actually feel that they don't really have any choice. They're rushing around in the morning to catch the train in the first place, and they might only have 30 minutes, 45 minutes on the train, and that's their opportunity to have breakfast. So many people feel it's really not a problem. Take a look. Uh, I mean, it would probably be a good thing for the health of people. Uh, I was hungry this morning, so you know how it is. <laughs> I think it's unfair if it's someone's daily commute and that's their routine and they don't have any time otherwise in their life than to say that they can't eat on trains, because eating's a basic human right. <laughs> if someone's eating on the train and it's you know a food that you can't stand being around, then you have the right to move. So you can move on the train, but you can't ask them to stop eating. No. Why? I don't think it's There's no denying business, what, that it can doing. actually be really quite tricky to get healthy snacks at the train station, depending on where you are. If you take a See, that's the other problem. There's some, people are eating on trains. someone with a breakfast burrito who's just pulled the plug. They just pulled the plug and said, I'm not having this, I uh, want my burrito. I hopefully we'll kebab. go back to Nick, because he's live on that train uh, all morning. The question is, should buses and trains become food-free zones? Joining us now is Judy Love. He says, if you need to eat, then eat. And the Queen of Clean, Aggie McKenzie, who thinks those who snack should be publicly shamed to stop. <laughs> Have you ever done that, Aggie? <laughs> well, publicly shame somebody. Yes. <laughs> no, but um, I think that eating on tubes and trains, particularly when it's hot food or smelly mm. food, is uh, an infringement on other people's rights. It's a bit like, I hate watching people putting make putting their makeup on in a tube or in a bag. Oh, do you? Yeah. It's What's like, wrong with that? Do this at home. No, it's, I don't want to see personal grooming or somebody else doing their thing or spraying perfume. So or, have you never or, put or lipstick on in, their hair. in public? Oh. <laughs> no, I, I'm, no, I'm talking about full makeup. And, you know, I think it's a similar sort of thing. You... you do all the stuff at home. You don't need to be doing it in public. Judy, what do you think? Look, the makeup thing, I hear you. I, I, I remember when I was like, I don't like seeing people put makeup on the train until I was in a situation <laughs> where I had to put makeup on the, on the train. Yeah. Because how I look now is not how I looked beforehand. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I, I understand that some people feel like, oh, you know, it's an infringement on people's, um, you know, space. However, you know, someone's basic human rights. If you don't like the smell of the food, then move. I'm sure I've been on the train with a pot of curry goat myself that, sometimes. It's crammed at certain times. Well, this is a point. In and the if people morning, start getting out... I was on a train, somebody started getting out their curry, laying out the well, raita <laughs> and the naan bread. I mean, apart from making me really hungry... Exactly. It That's was the actually point. very amazing. It made me feel sick as I, well at the I same think time. I think a lot of people, the same people who are saying that they don't want to smell it, it's the same people when you're working with them, they're like, oh, can I taste a bit of that exotic food? So let's just <laughs> keep it real. Sometimes there's not enough time at home. We're dealing with children, we're rushing, we live in a society where it's continuously... Busy. That little half an hour might be the, the only time you can fit something in. Mm. Yeah, we're all busy. We've all got 24 hours in a day, though, haven't mm. we? And I think to um, resort to junk food and eating it on the hoof, it's it's it, we're sleepwalking our way into um, national em obesity epidemic. If I be actually. honest with you, as you can see, I'm a big girl. I'm a fluffy, and I'm telling you, it's not snacking You're on a the train. Fluffy. <laughs> I'm a fluffy. Wow. That's you I've know. Not heard of that term? Well, you're hearing it today. I am. It, it's a fluffy. I'm a big girl in size, and I'm telling you, it's not snacking on a train that has got me like this. So if we're going to connect that with obesity, I think we need to take it to the basic level. We need to teach people how to eat. We need to take it to the basics where we are now letting healthy food be less expensive. That's what we're... That's the Aggie, issue. would you I... care as much if people were sitting there with sticks of carrot and cucumber, you know, because their children were getting hungry, maybe they have to get a bus to school? I think that's would, absolutely would you, fine. You I, I love seeing... I saw a little kid walking along the other day um, eating an apple and I thought, 
actually, that's really unusual to see a kid walking along. And you weren't an offended apple. by that? No, of course I was. I, I think that's smell. really... No, mm. no, that's... I encourage people to eat good, healthy food. I think um, what's happening nowadays is that there's far too much sugar, fat, salt and food, and kids are just... Um, uh, you know, allowed to eat what they want when they want, and it's just terrible. We're we're all heading towards you know cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And the only healthy nation in the Western world is Japan, and they ban eating on public transport. Well, our poll that we've conducted agrees with you, Aggie. Seventy percent really? say you should not allow eating. On public transport. No, we should not uh, ban it. It's oh, the other way around. Not ban it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Say. She's still Look. in her magic mic moment. <laughs> Look, I, I, like I said earlier, I feel like some food is the only time we have. Look, I enjoy a Jamaican patty on the train. It fills you up. It's delightful. <laughs> I will share it. If you see me eating on the train, just ask for some. <laughs> Look, at the end of the day, food is about love. And yes, we know that we're living in a society where unfortunately there's a lot more obesity. But we've got to start at the ground basics. In some areas you go, there's chicken and chip shops everywhere. You yeah. know, we shouldn't be condemning people because of a lifestyle of being completely busy. Maybe we should be looking at that. That's why people are maybe mm. becoming obese. Because you're just trying to eat something for a quick... To keep yourself to going. To keep yourself going. Go on, Aggie, you're trying but to jump pe in. People have stopped knowing what hunger means because they're frightened to feel hunger. Mm. So they just go from one snack to the other, to the other, to the other. And healthy eating gets forgotten in all yeah. of that. And it's... Um, it's a sort of lack of respect for both food and people's bodies. I understand regarding the snacking. And, I, I, you know, I understand regards to snacking in itself. Mm. <laughs> I love it. But what I'm saying is, I think, when you're getting to a level where you're telling people where they can and cannot eat, um, like the lady said, it's a breach of mm. human rights. And if well, you feel your human rights is being breached because of a smell, then you try and find somewhere else to sit on the train. Think about smoking, OK? 10 or 20 years ago, people could smoke on public transport, buses, tubes, mm. all the rest of it. Now they can't, and the level of smoking has gone right down. I'm sure there's a correlation between not being allowed to... It's socially kind of irresponsible now, and it's frowned upon to smoke. Mm. And I think that if the same rule applied to eating or snacking on public transport, I think that... What about People a long train to... journey? Isn't it part of the joy well, when yeah, they come down agree. with the trolley? Yeah, and but there's a time You have place. yourself something? Yeah. So you well, think if, if everyone else is doing it, you think it's OK? If it's a commu like being on a plane, yes, you want to eat at the same that's time? Right. You need, I mean, a... if you're on a long-haul journey, you need to eat, and it's part of, you know, punctuating the journey. And, um, you know, you, you have to eat. But I think it's it's kind of a, the mindless kind of snacking and just Grazing. not thinking it, about other people. Those who are getting in touch today, mostly the ones that do want a ban, are saying it's because of the smell, because they don't like the fact that it's you know impinging on their rights from that point of view. Francis says, "I hate the smell; it makes me feel ill." Louise says, "The banning of food on public transport isn't going to solve the nation's obesity crisis. It will make my bus journey more pleasant, though, <laughs> instead of the smell of dodgy fried chicken." But other people are making the point that, you know, they need to do it for their jobs. Jazz says, "My police officer husband has just got up from an overrunning night shift. He only had time to get dressed before heading to the train. He has some food he has to eat on the train, as he won't have time to eat at work. Exactly. What does he do otherwise?" And so James just says, can't. "If we get rid of snacks, that's my job gone, because that's what I do. I sell drinks exactly. on the trolley." Exactly. And then others are getting involved saying, don't stop at public transport, this is Paul, why not jail everyone who eats smelly food in cinemas? OK, that person needs we to... see. They, they need to come and eat some of the smelly food, <laughs> the same food that you're upset about. <laughs> come and eat it and trust me, you will change your mind, OK? okay. I think his point is... <laughs> Get in a, with the smell, don't start, reject the smell. Exactly. <laughs> once a film starts no and people start eating noisy, noisy busy food, that's when it gets mm. very... You don't like that. But they do annoying. sell pop. Corn, crunchy yeah. things. I know. There. It's ridiculous. Isn't it? uh, Aggie Ginny, lovely to see. Thank you for coming in thank this morning. You. Thank you for all those comments. A lot of you getting involved. Certainly got a lot of people going, it has hasn't got it? A lot this of people going. Let's just double check that upset. poll again because I think. Uh, I muddled it, didn't Kate I? Kate was nearly as confused as Gavin Williamson. Uh, should we ban <laughs> eating food on public transport? 70%. That's resounding, isn't it? 70% say 70 no. 70% say no. You know, you've just got to think practically. They want their cake them. and they want to eat it, wherever they are. They want to eat it on the bus. <laughs> or some curried goat, and I'm going to share one of those. Make sure I'll, I'll get you some. I'll get some good curried goat <laughs> yeah. from Brixton, trust <laughs> me.